Nine out of the 10 students I was coaching this week were senior golfers. All of them wanted to hit driver longer and straighter, but they thought that we're, they were just getting past that point now. They were getting a bit older, and that just wasn't the case. We managed to add some significant yardage to their drives by introducing them to what I call the power circle or the power plane. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what the power plane is and then give you five simple ways that you can go about achieving it so you too can start adding distance and accuracy. Now, you won't need all the different ways, maybe just one or maybe even a combination of uh, the two, but they really, really will help. Now, before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you'll never have to remember a thing. I always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below. So what is the power circle or the power plane? Very, very simple. I want you to imagine you've got a hammer and a nail, okay? Now, if I'm hammering this, okay, I'm gonna swing it in different planes. Now, if I swing in this circle or this plane, I'm gonna miss the nail, it's very weak, yeah? If I swing in this plane, it's almost a glancing blow. But if I get in the correct plane here, I could swing the hammer very fast and very hard and it'd still be incredibly accurate. That's what I want you to do in the golf swing. So in the golf swing, you play golf down here. So we need to move our bodies on an incline. If we were up here, the plane would be this way, okay? But in golf, look, we don't play a ball here. We play, look, a ball down there. So our shoulders, our hips, and our knees need to work on a basically a plane or a circle that's gonna be powerful. Most of the time, if you've been lacking flexibility, what tends to happen is you tend to, your shoulders get too level in the backswing, or your hips get too level in the backswing, or your hips, or, or my dad recently actually, in a, in a, uh, we've recently played, his shoulders getting too level on the way through. They weren't staying in this power plane, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do now is give you five simple ways on how you can stay in this power plane very, very easily, so you can generate effortless power, and more importantly, accuracy too. So tip number one, and all of these tips are gonna be super simple that you can just take straight to the golf course. So the first tip is what I gave to John, one of the seniors. So he was getting a driver flight that wasn't very long. He was kind of slicing a little bit away to the right hand side. And he felt as though he couldn't really complete his backswing. But the reason why he couldn't complete it is he wasn't set up right in the first place. So this is what John was doing. I see this a lot. He wasn't set up to have a perfect power plane because when he set up to the ball here, his shoulders, where Amy left the target, and so were his forearms. All we did was this. I got him to imagine grabbing hold of a steering wheel, turning the steering wheel this way. Now look, his forearms would go from this angle to this angle. When you do that, and you draw this trail shoulder back, you've now basically opened the door, look, to do what? Move on the circle, right? When this is in this position, John had only one thing to do, pick the club up, chop down on the golf ball, and create this big, horrible cut. So all I did was said, look, John, do me a favor. Just imagine you've got the steering wheel here, turn the steering wheel around. You've got shoulders here, you've got the right shoulder back now. Now you're in a position to really start to wind it back. But we need to do one other thing, okay, which is now tip number two. That in itself didn't quite fix the problem because John was so used to kind of looking down like this and aiming this way that what do you see with my hips? I see this a lot. His hips are also aiming this way too. So look at my bum. From here, I'm angled this way. This is not power. I, all I did with John was get everything, turn everything, the whole steering wheel this way. This was huge because look, now I can wound up, where's my bum now? My bum can be used to drive the power as opposed to here look where John was, he's just flicking at the golf ball, losing loads and loads of speed and loads of accuracy. So those two tips combined, literally turn the steering wheel around, including the bum, they really feel like you're setting the bum here. Now, I mean, if I exaggerated this, I've created all this space look to really turn my body. Now suddenly he could complete his backswing for the first time and generate and store lots more energy that he can use to power the shot. So we got him set. I got him then into a bit of a routine where he would, he would literally do this. One, then he'd grip the golf club. And now look, he's ready to go. Simple as that. 
So tip number three, and this one's a real big one. I see this with so many golfers. And so David, another one of the students, uh, he was set up really, really good, but he still wasn't swinging on this beautiful Kawa power plane because he didn't allow his body to move with freedom. He'd been so concerned about putting the club into positions that that had led to so much tension in his body that he never allowed any kind of freedom of motion. So what I gave him was this simple, simple tip and I recommend everybody do this. So what I want you to do is get yourself set up for a second and in your normal golf posture. And I want you to imagine someone has called your name out behind you. So I'm gonna look behind me here, right? And I'm looking at that tree behind me here. Now I want you to notice what my body's done to kind of look at that tree. What have my hips done? What have my ankles done? And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna now even look further behind here. Now I'm gonna look at that tree. What have my ankles done, my hips done, my knees done, my shoulders done? What has my heel done? It's actually starting to come off the ground, doesn't it, right? If I wanted to look behind there. So what I want you to do is I want you to do this exercise of literally, don't literally move off the ball, look like stay in line, but just start to look as far behind as you can based on your own level of flexibility. And notice what your feet, knees, hips are having to do to look behind. You see, most golfers I see have basically trained themselves to stay so fixed that when you do that, you have no mobility in your hips and your shoulders, so it becomes a very handsy and armsy swing, and you think it's because you're getting stiff and you're getting older. And most of the time, I promise you, it really isn't the case. It's just because you've just got used to that feeling when actually you have more mobility than you realize, okay? So do me a favor, do this exercise, and then what we do is this, I look behind me here, okay? Look behind as far as I can, and then I go back to the golf ball. Now, sometimes when I've done this and people have done this exercise, they go back and they can't quite get back to the golf ball. So we, can, we go back, okay, that's where you need to be, round about here. That's the full length of your swing. So we then practice literally feeling what it's like to get ankle, knee, hip mobility into the backswing. And now look, you can store that energy in that backswing and stay look on the power plane versus look here, where now suddenly you're having to lift up in that backswing. That is all we did. Now this one here does take a little bit of practice because it's, a, it's kind of scary. A lot of people, when they do this for the first time, they feel like they're moving excessively compared to what they used to do. But I promise you, this one is huge. It stores so much power. And if you have a look at my backswing here, when I swing back, you can see it looks very similar to what we've just done a minute ago, okay? But for you, if you've been used to doing this, it's gonna feel like a long way to go, okay? So do me a favor, do it. I promise you, it will generate some serious power. So tip number four, and this is super, super simple and one that I gave my dad recently. So my dad was actually set up pretty good at setup. He was actually staying in the power plane on the way back, okay? But on the way through, he kind of spoiled it. So that we want to kind of maintain, there's the shoulder angle, there's a hip angle. As we're coming through, we want to maintain that all the way back and all the way through. My dad wasn't doing that. He would get here and his shoulders would end up this way, right? Level, why? Because every, the lower body, uh, everything gets static for impact, got quite tense. And then it would be hands and armsy, and you'll see his elbows almost collapsing here as he's trying to get create room look to hit the golf ball. What he needed to do was have a little bit more confidence in himself, okay? Now, all I did here with my dad is gave him a very, very simple image that was a bit scary, but worked unbelievably well. It was like 25 yards plus on his driver. I got him to imagine himself as a senior golfer, as an Olympic hammer thrower. And as a poster kind of like, I said, if you threw a hammer, would you do this? No, what would you do? This is a big long chair. What, you'd throw the hammer out there. So imagine you're throwing the hammer. Now what this does, okay, when you imagine throwing this big heavy hammer freely, your body starts to respond. It starts to, the legs start to work, your hips start to work in however way you need them to work best on your flexibility. He threw the hammer and suddenly now his body created all this space to swing through. His arms became extended. He created room compared to this. Now we add room look to hit through the shot. And what I want you to do is to use that similar image to generate power for yourself, okay? You'll find your way of throwing 
that hammer. This is what's going to give you that extra bit of snap through the impact area for my dad. It was massive for his driver. Tip number five, and this is more of a question. Do you have the right type of equipment for your current ability and age? I've just brought my dad back from an amazing experience where he had a custom fitting in the Callaway National Performance Center at St. Andrews, uh, the old course. And I wanted to bring you on the conversation that my dad's had and what he's learned from that custom fitting as a senior golfer. Jump in on the conversation now, because I think you're going to be really, really impressed of what he experienced during that day. Love that, dad. What a flight on that. That's an absolute belter of a flight, isn't it? So one of the things I certainly believe when you're playing golf is if you want to uh, you know, hit the ball better, hit it a bit longer, you've got to have the right equipment. And not enough people talk about this. And Dad, you've just had a custom fit with Callaway. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you're doing stuff like that. Oh, yeah, it was a lovely fight. Nice, crisp hit with a five wood. Well, I mean, one of the things we've done, uh, or what Callaway yeah. did, the Cali you know, the, we've, got, we've just been to the Callaway Performance Center here at the... Um, St. Andrews Lynx, yep. and they've done an amazing job at putting together a set of golf clubs that kind of suit Dad where he is right now. You know, he's a senior golfer, lost a little bit of distance, yes, but you've yes, gained the distance now by putting a nine wood, seven wood, and a five wood in the bag. Yeah, you know, oh, it's made a huge difference. So a lot of people get nervous about custom fitting, Dad. But you know, what's your experience been like with the the guys here at it's St. Been Andrews Lynx? Very friendly, has it? Um, yeah, they've been really good, and. The beauty of it is, if we seniors or non-seniors, if we're going to take, play golf regular, yep. it just makes sense to get measured up and have a custom fitting. Well, because because uh, it definitely, from, from what I've experienced so far, it's definitely worth doing. <laughs> well, do you remember when, you, when, they, when he put nine wood in the bag, what, would, what did you think straight away? Uh, you, when well, you, when the, your reaction when he, when, the, when Mike, the custom fitter here, give you nine wood. Well, I, the face was virtually. I could see the whole face. Yeah. When I when I stood over it. I thought, yeah. Well, that's going to go straight up in the air. Yeah, yeah. But what it and, does uh, is it gives you that launch to give you that give distance. It gives you a lovely launch. And look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, one of the things clearly is is find the right equipment to suit you at your current stage in uh, your kind of golfing career, right? You know, of course, look, not everyone's gonna need new equipment. It's not about that. And my dad's only been given probably 10 clubs. You know, we had a full set, but you only needed 10. That's gonna make a massive difference to him. It reduces the confusion. And you, I'll put some kind of shots he's been hitting whilst I'm chatting here. He's loving it, and I'm sure you'll love it too. So I really hope these five tips are going to help. If you think they will, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and maybe share it with one of your friends. And of course, look, remember there's a free download or practice guide in the description box below so you won't need to remember a thing. And plus, if you want to actually see me giving these actual tips to a real golfer, check this video out right here where I give it to a senior golfer and made some major differences to his driver. But until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.